Hi guys, this is Mrs. Lamb, and today I am going to teach you about the geography and climate of Latin America. Um, so first of all, on this map, you can see highlighted in blue uh, parts of the world that are Latin America. Do not pay attention to this dot or this dot. Those are a mistake. But this is Mexico. This is Central America. This continent is South America. Uh, these islands should also be highlighted in blue. Those are um, the Caribbean islands, which are also part of Latin America. So um, Latin America includes Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, and South America. And again, all of the islands are not shown in this image. Um, that really should be shown. Why is it called Latin America? The reason is because of the languages spoken um, by those who colonized this area, which were the Spanish and the Portuguese. Those languages are both derived from an earlier language called Latin. Um, and so Europeans later called that region Latin America because of the languages. So both Portuguese and Spanish were derived from Latin language. Um, because the region is defined by a cultural connection, in this case, language, it is called a culture region. And if you remember from the beginning of the school year, we were learning about the five themes of social studies and culture was one of them. And also region was one of them. And so this really ties in nicely to really the themes for the entire school year. So let's start off talking about Mexico. The country of Mexico is the furthest north of the Latin American countries. Um, it is shown in this map here. Mexico's major physical features include mountains, plateaus, and plains. Mexico's two major mountain ranges share the same name called the Sierra Madres. And there is a slight distinction made between the two's name, the Sierra Madre Occidental and the Sierra Madre Oriental. In, be in between the two ranges is Mexico's large central plateau. The vast northern stretches the central plateau are desert. And so you can see here on this uh, map, you have the Sierra Madre Oriental, the Sierra Madre Occidental, and um, here's the Sierra Madre del Sur. All of these are mountain ranges. And then you can also see the Gulf of Mexico. You can see the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of California. Baja California is this peninsula. Again, part of Mexico, this part of California is. Um, you can see the Yucatan Peninsula. And let's see here if there's anything else I want to point out. No, not right now. Okay. So Mexico's peaks, um, just south of the central, uh, or sometimes it's called the Mexican plateau, lies Mexico's two highest peaks, like two highest mountains, Orizaba and Popocatapetl. And both of these mountains are also volcanoes. At the southern end of the central plateau sits Mexico City, the world's second most populated city. Air pollution is severe there and the city's location has contributed to this problem. It's because the city is kind of in a valley, so it's kind of down below sea level, and then it's got mountains surrounding it. And what ends up happening is the mountains end up trapping the air in the city which means like the polluted air, like from automobiles, it ends up getting stuck there. And so the city, Mexico City, has a huge issue with air pollution. Another problem for Mexico City is the fact that it was built on what used to be a lake. So it is actually built on a drained lake bed. So automatically that ground is less stable. It's not as hard as regular ground because it was once uh, at the bottom of a lake. That's where Lake Texcoco once was. And when we were learning about the Aztec Empire, where it was built and Tenochtitlan was a city in on an island in a lake, 
well, this is the lake it was talking about, which has been drained, most of it. And that's where Mexico City is built. So you have to worry about the loose soil. And like if there's ever an earthquake, those buildings come crashing down pretty easily. Um, because like I said, the ground is less sturdy. So Central America and the Caribbean. Um, Central America is very mountainous and it is the land bridge between Mexico, which you can see shown here in brown, the very tail end of Mexico. Um, so all shown in the colors right here is uh, Central America and then Colombia down here is the beginning of the South American continent. So Central America forms a land bridge between North and South America. And then the Caribbean islands, which you can kind of barely see, they are scattered throughout the Caribbean Sea. About 80% of Central America is hilly or mountainous, and most of it is covered in forests. Rainforests cover much of the lowlands, and the higher regions, deciduous trees cloak many of the slopes. And if you know anything about deciduous trees, those are trees, um, I think, that remain green all year round, regardless of the type of weather. Central American volcanoes. A string of more than 40 volcanoes line 900 miles of Central America's Pacific coast, where two tectonic plates crash against each other. Okay, now part two of Latin America. The Caribbean islands lie to the east of Central America. Some of these islands, such as St. Kitts and Granada, are actually the peaks of volcanic mountains rising from the ocean floor, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, so you can see um, Granada is right here, and then St. Kitts is up here. So these are the tops of volcanoes coming from the sea. Um, other islands such as the Bahamas began as coral reefs. These are off the coast of uh, Florida. And this is what coral reef looks like when it's still living. South America. So South America is the southern continent of the Americas situated entirely in the western hemisphere and mostly in the southern hemisphere, with a relatively small portion in the northern hemisphere. So basically what that's saying is that the equator runs through the top part of South America. It is bordered on the west by the Pacific Ocean, on the north and the east by the Atlantic Ocean. North America and the Caribbean Sea both lie to the northwest of the continent of South America. So here's South America, Here it is again, and just so you know, right here is the equator where my cursor is. So a small portion of South America is actually in the Northern Hemisphere. Thought that was interesting. And equator runs right through the country of Ecuador. And if you guys remember from the very beginning of the school year, we, we read the story, the five themes of um, Ecuador. And you guys learned about this kid who traveled to Ecuador. And um, that's the country that we had read about. I think his name was CJ in the story. And then there's some islands that actually go with Ecuador that aren't shown on this map. The Galapagos Islands, they're off in the ocean here in the Pacific Ocean. They are part of Ecuador, just kind of like Hawaii is part of the United States, but it's not actually geographically attached to us. Same thing for Ecuador. The Andes Mountains, um, and you can see on the previous page, so I can go back for just a second. Right here, the Andes Mountains go all the way down the west coast of South America. All of these are the Andes Mountains. Um, it is the, it is a very long, and in fact, the longest continuous mountain range on the Earth's surface. So it stretches over 5,000 miles long, and it goes along South America's west coast. And you can actually see these mountains from space, which is very interesting. Mount Aconcagua is in Argentina, and it is the highest mountain peak in the Western Hemisphere. 
Beyond the Andes Mountains, to the east of the Andes Mountains, lies the central plains of South America. The plains in southern South America are called the Pampas. Um, basically, they're grasslands and they're flatlands. Um, South America's largest rivers begin in the Andes Mountains, and they drain in the central plains and then flow into the Atlantic Ocean. They include the Orinoco, the Piranha Plata, and the Amazon rivers. You can see the Amazon River from an aerial view. And um, some of the wildlife that you can find in that region. Quite beautiful, really. And that's all that I have for you today. So I hope you got your notes filled out. I hope you learned something. And I also hope that you have a great day. Thank you for watching.